the reason I'm going to talk to you about our fungicides uh, in silage is that some of our best results that we're seeing as far as uh, uh, plant health benefits as well as yield response on uh, uh, corn is in the silage varieties. Silage varieties in general, when I was in genetics, <clears throat> We were breeding them for digestibility. Digestibility means that we don't have a whole lot of fiber or anything that sort of is hard in them, so they cannot, or they do not in general, withstand disease. Not too often you have worry when worrying about disease when we were when we were selecting corn silage or silage only varieties. And when it was a dual purpose, it was usually a dual purpose for a reason. It was either not selling really well and Generally, with stock issues, so it was very soft fiber that allowed it to be dual purpose. It had soft fiber, so we could get the right feed value and quality out of that <coughs> product. So again, generally a taller plant when it was a dual purpose. So both of those, whether it's a dual purpose silage or a silage only, in general, not every one is less uh, usually has less disease resistance. So. This is why often we hear Wisconsin in that area getting huge results, uh, 1.6, 1.3 ton to the acre yield advantage by using a fungicide, which, and relative consistent. The other thing, the big thing, the other take home is if you're wanting to make sure that your uh, harvest period is extended, so how many guys see silage, you go to the outdoor farm show, you come back and you wonder what happened, what happened to the silage, all of a sudden it went, whoop, it's gone. Silage farm. Goes from green to brown within a week or two, a couple of days, right? If I'm trying to get a custom guy in, it's too late. A custom guy is really want <clears throat> something that's more consistent, could take a little bit more time. By using a fungicide, we can prevent a lot of that uh, green to brown by extending uh, and keeping the leaves on a little bit longer, at least that you're harvesting something that looks a little bit more like silage and something that you want to put in the bunk. So, I'm going to go through a number of slides fairly quickly. Just a little bit about the products that we sell, not fungicides in general, but there's a number of fungicides out there, and uh, the headline or what we're selling, this Brackless Strobin, they are different. They come from different. These are all strobularians. Uh, they're all using fungicides, Stratego, Acapella, Quadris. They're in different areas within that map of strobularians. And the one over here, Prachlostrobin, is the only one that gives us this excellence benefit. So if you haven't heard of excellence, we'll talk a little bit about it. What it really does is it gives you greener leaves, stronger stems, and higher yields. So how does it work? This works. In addition to increased growth efficiency, 
Research shows that treated plants also react differently to stress. When untreated plants experience stress, they produce ethylene, a signal for the plant to stop growth and shut down. The plant loses its color and can drop pods, leaves, and flowers. In treated crops, these stress signals are reduced. Research shows that the crops are better able to manage minor cold, heat, and drought stresses over short periods of time. The benefits of crops that remain greener and more productive even under stressful conditions. Increased growth efficiency and better stress management. These excellent benefits that occur while part of growth needs seems to be changing the race. We don't have the defenses in the genetics anymore to prevent uh, northern leaf blight. And I think we've got enough, uh, it used to blow in, but we're now getting quite a bit, I think, that's sitting in our soils and affecting every year. So it's getting a higher and higher level of northern corn leaf blight. That's the one that takes that plant and goes, and we're gone. It's green one day, next thing you know, and generally northern's coming in right around tassel time, usually in that August time frame, but the effects, the end effects, similar to the leaf hopper, where you see it and it's too late, is usually that first week or second week of September where all of a sudden it, it shuts itself down. It knocks off the leaves as well as puts so much stress on the plant that you get increased stock issues as well. So that's what northern one looks like. We call it, looks like a little cigar. If you haven't seen it in the plant, uh, last year when we were spraying silage with uh, uh, Preaxor, we saw lesions that size at that time, which is way earlier than normal. So it did come in early last year. That's why we had a lot of, a lot of northern in the crop. Again, you can see when you treat, this is what normally happens in the farm plant from underneath. You can see some of the uh, leaves starting to uh, take about half the leaf out is usually what you see, and then that whole leaf shuts down. I've got this slide in here. This is for grain corn, but it applies as well. The larger the crop, this, this uh, disease comes in from the top, so you want to protect as many leaves as possible. Now, it would be nice if we could put this on with a herbicide when the corn's this high, and it would work. But we get about two to three weeks. So when did I say that the disease was coming in? Two to three weeks control with any kind of fungicide. The disease comes in in July. We put it on in, it's not gonna work. And those are not the leaves that contribute to yield. 60 to 70% of your yield are on the leaves that are at the ear and above. You wanna protect them in. So the larger the, the plant, the more control, the more yield in general. So some of the results that we've seen this is mainly, uh, a lot of this slide deck was uh, developed in the US, so a lot of these are uh, uh, US slides, but headline versus untreated, a larger plant. That's not a fire corn? That, uh, yeah, it's down in a valley. <laughs> <laughs> and a tall variety. Uh, this one here, same thing, this was uh, in drought, and we talked about the stress relief. This was a, a fairly droughted field. You can see it's the same same hybrid, but the green compared to the other. And I'll show a quick video of what we saw last year locally that uh, shows that as well. This picture here was going around Twitter. Uh, it's an infrared picture, and the treated part is the green part, and the uh, you can see the, the red is less healthy. Uh, generally is what we're trying to see here. We talked a little bit about infrared before. I'm just gonna run this a little bit, hopefully you can see it. You can see the two green parts that are treated with Preaxor. And then that tree, that's why it wasn't treated in that middle because they didn't want to drive the sprayer through there. It was a ground rig. The neat thing to, uh, to see is uh, is uh, the end rows. It's not a variety effect. You can see how the boom went out over the end of the rows and it stayed green there. So that's what we're talking about, being able to keep that plant greener longer to be able to extend your harvest period. We talk about stress relief. This picture here is from the Mary Hill Research Farm, just, over, just nearby here. We had a couple shots of hail. We had two events right at Tassel, right when we should be applying it. We applied uh, Preaxor on there. That's sort of the yield difference, but also you can see the difference in the amount of leaves that are there and the health of the plant, how it stayed greener longer. So again, 
keeping uh, disease out of the plant through the holes that were damaged through hail, as well as uh, some stress relief in that plant that would allow it to, again, grow and uh, give us higher yields. In the last two years of incorporation of headline and, and perhaps or on our corn, we've seen definitely silage yield increases and quality increases. The increase of plant health has allowed our uh, corn to stand unbelievably long, even through big wind storms and, and other weather events to help increase our yield and preserve that yield because nobody likes to kind of buy down corn. Our axe where we sprayed after a major hailstorm event came through and golf ball size hail and pretty much looked like the crop was decimated. And by the time it's all said and done, I, if there was maybe going to be 5% yield loss and the corn was still green right up to the day it froze, preserving the yield, you know, and keeping right. that keeping that, 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 I mean, they promised me 30 days of plant health and I literally got 60 days of plant health, which is a big plus when you're looking at uh, every leaf shredded on your corn plant. Yeah. It's still being able to hit yields way north of the under. This year is our corn so high in energy that it tests like yearly instead of corn silage. So we've been able to drastically cut back on, on, on corn. In fact, they are feeding 50% of our rations, corn silage, and our finishing rations. Standability of silage corn. This just shows the untreated to the headline. So, headline half of Preaxor is a full rate of headline. It's the headline that's giving that excellence benefits that we talked about in the video. This is the stock results. That's why we're getting that extra standability. So it is affecting down, and this is where this shuts off, right in here. When this pitches off and dies, that's when you get that rapid uh, die down, the anthracnose infection. You want to prevent that to extend that window of harvest. So main, main point, sort of yield, 1.3 to uh, uh, 1.6 ton to the acre at 65%. Uh, does it affect quality? We say it, it, it doesn't negatively affect quality, but what it does usually is give an increase in starch. Because what we've done is allow more photosynthesis to go in there, more conversion of carbohydrates in the ear, generally larger ears, and there was a, when they were uh, larger ears. So when you talked about grain corn, it doesn't change maturity, but it does change the speed of dry down. All our varieties in general that we've been going with, we're pushing yields so much we're getting die down instead of dry down. So if the leaf husks, all of your drying in grain corn is a lot to do with how green the husks are, how they open it up, how we get rid of the water after we get to the maturity. Maturity is 32 to 34% is what maturity is. It becomes a black layer, it's matured. Then it is how that plant dries down. Dry down if we've got greener ear husks, it's going to hold up, we say, 1 to 2 percent, which is what you saw. It will be a little wet. So, if we're doing silage and we've extended the uh, heat unit range to be able to get greener corn to be able to harvest, uh, and we add something that allows it to stay greener longer, we could be pushing the maturity for our bumps in that. So, if you're thinking of using this, you'd want to use it on your highest yielding fields, bigger results there, uh, again, close to tassel, but maybe on uh, hybrids that are a little closer to the maturity, because we don't want to extend it out too much. And again, it's really a walk before we run, we're really starting this process of using uh, fungicides and silage corn. So our yield about 1.3 uh, ton to the acre. Again, what we're doing with the excellence benefit, whether it's headline or preox, or is we're getting that additional yield because we're keeping that plant greener longer. Um, so it doesn't change maturity, but if we've extended the maturity to be able to keep that plant greener longer, you know, around uh, around Mother Nature, then we're changing it the other way by doing it with preox. So we're doing the same thing on a shorter heat unit variety. Um, just here's some analysis. I don't want to go through it in detail. First off, crude protein, I don't believe that's correct. I, it shouldn't change crude protein. You can see what it does on NDF, but uh, we're getting more milk and that's generally coming from more starch, right? 
We're packing more starch, we've got more sugars going into the plant because we've got both of this happening longer, more carbohydrates being convert, uh, converted to starch. And that's where the milk yield is coming from. Just a quick update on aerial application. Uh, it is, class, uh, so headline, no problem, phone up, go, and put headline on. Benefits, a lot of the data that you saw here was based on headline application. For Preaxor, it's a class two, which does require a permit. Again, we'll be talking to Nicole and John uh, about those permits and how we need to do them to be able to uh, apply it by air or ground rig is no issues at all. So it does require a permit where the fields are uh, just because it's got two products in it and uh, how long it lasts. So where are we gonna use it? Uh, high yield corn, disease prone hybrids, or tight rotations, corn on corn. Something that you're gonna have higher disease level in the field anyways. Uh, again, tassel timing is the best, that's VT, but it can be applied at any time. It's just the bigger the corn, the bigger the return. So if we can't get our ground, if the ground rigs will only go through corn this high, it's better to put it on this high than not at all. You want, to, you want to hit as many leaves as possible. And that's all I have. Questions?